Um, thank you, Sally, and um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the issue of um, media and diversity is a very big one, and in most cases, also an awkward one. Um, in discussing media and diversity, I always look at what the former president of um, Mystery Writers Association of the uh, United States, uh, Raymond uh, Chandler, what he wrote about um, in his book, The Long Goodbye. That was in 1953, just a few years, I think uh, six years before he died. He was talking about fr press freedom. As um, he also mentioned the issue of uh, peddling scandals, okay, um, sensationalism, sensationalization. And um, he did highlight that a newspaper is out to make money. Okay. And um, how does it make money? Is you know, through circulation, increased circulation. And how do you get increased circulation? And that's where the issue of diversity, that's where the issue of, you know, um, media representation, that's where everything is lumped together. Okay? Well, in most cases, people will say, by, you know, way of <coughs> propaganda. Because if you sensationalize a story, you are more likely to get, you know, more readers than when you just, you know, give a factual account of what happened. Some people would also argue that, you know, sensationalizing a story is basically an angle to a fact. So it depends on, you know, which area you look at. If you look at it very well, there are a lot of issues why the issue of, um, you know, diversity does not go very well in the media. And one of those issues I have already highlighted the issue of circulation. If you don't have enough circulation, you will not get ABC audit. And if you don't have, you know, ABC audit, you know, you are not going to get advertisers putting in advert in your newspaper. So that's a big problem. And that affects the issue of diversity because, you know, nobody cares for diversity anymore. And that is in line with the issue of uh, ethics. Then another issue, apart from circulation, is ownership and control. <coughs> As we all know, who pays the piper, they taste the tune. So that's also a problem when it comes to you know, um, making sure that uh, we reflect diversity in the media. Then, you have media practitioners who think that they know it all. You have media pra practitioners with also less knowledge of the issue of diversity. And that, you know, causes a lot of problems. I remember a couple of years ago, maybe in the late late 90s or early 2000. There were a couple of uh, headlines. Free cars for refugees. Refugees on the rampage. There were so many, you know, headlines that um, a good number of newspapers, especially tabloids, you know, used on their front pages. Some of those tabloids, despite the fact that they are based in Dublin, headquartered in Dublin, maybe with you know, operations all over the world. Some of them had their sub-editors in the UK, in Belfast as an example. And sometimes you look at uh, the headline and you look at the article itself. 
the connection is not there. Very, very, very minute connection. You may not even identify the connection to the story. And that's simply because the journalist does not understand. I mean, the sub-editor, the journalist who sub-edited the story, does not understand the culture of the readers. In this case, the sub-editor who was in Belfast did not know what was happening in Dublin. But common sense could have prevailed if you know, he wanted to do the writing. But in this case, he was only thinking of how the organization he or she worked for would be able to make more profit by way of circulation. So that is a big problem. Another issue is to do with value judgment. Sometimes media workers, journalists, they base a lot of their work on value judgment. I'll give you an example. In about 2003, early 2000, there was a protest in Dublin City Center. That was, you know, in support of asylum seekers. Then, an Irish Times, it may not have been an Irish Times photographer, but a photographer took a photo, okay, of a black child. Most of the people at that protest were white people. Forget about nationalities, let's just say white and black for in the context of what I'm saying. So when the photographer gave the photo to the Irish Times, the caption the next day was the problem. Not because, you know, the photo of a black child was taken at a protest that was mainly, you know, attended by white people. But the problem was that this particular child who had never been to, I think it was Nigeria, was identified as coming from Nigeria. That was the caption. And why do you think that happened? Because the photographer, the journalist, photojournalist, you know, based that part on that, you know, basically based it on his own value judgment, which was completely flawed. Some other times you have a lot of journalists doing their work, being influenced by racial, racial differentiation, which is also a problem. Then you have the issue of um, superiority and uh, readers subordination. That happens in the media. Journalists or media workers thinking that they are superior to their readers, who they you know, see as being you know, subordinate. It's also a major problem in terms of producing content. So the implication of all this means that the issue of diversity is not looked into. If you talk about ethics, a lot of people, a lot of journalists, sometimes are not bothered about ethics. In some cases, maybe due to the pressure of their job. When you're doing live reporting, Sometimes it's difficult, okay, for you to balance it. Another issue is um, if you also look at the coverage. Let me, if I use you know a suicide as an example. Every month, you see the association that you know promotes better media coverage when it comes to suicide. I've forgotten the particular name now. Um, the organization. Every month they send out information to journalists. Yes, a lot of people read it. But when something happens, it's always not easy to remember. Because 
of life coverage because it's immediate. The immediacy is also, you know, an issue. It a kind of does not help journalists in terms of making things better, producing better content. Some people might, you know, argue that look, there are laws that protect people, okay, who have been libeled in the media. If you are talking about diversity and you look at most of the articles that have been produced, published, or media coverage of so many things, especially you know, immigrants, travelers, women, and many other you know, people who belong to either a particular ethnic group or you know, nationality, it is not always the case with the majority of the population, especially for those who have the money to pursue cases or those who are powerful. <coughs> so laws guiding libel in this country does not favor the ordinary people. <coughs> Some people may argue that there is a press council. It is not always easy for those who belong to, you know, the ethnic, particular ethnic group or nationality to be able to actually fought, fight for their rights. So it is a major problem. I think that what needs to be done is to make the media more accountable. And how do you do that? Yes, media confers status. It has a status conferral nature. But who gives that power to the media? The readers. Who read the newspapers? People who view, you know, RTE, CNN. If people are able to stand up and be counted, are able to object to certain media coverage, I think it will be a, you know, a new beginning in getting media workers to respect the rights of the ordinary people, possibly the less privileged or members of the ethnic minority groups. So, if you want to reduce mistakes of misrepresentation of reality, as well as you know, mistakes made in publishing misleading and inaccurate information, or distortion of facts and events, facts of events, we also need to look at the education that you know, journalists are getting. Unfortunately, Michael Foley has, has um, gone. I see, you know, places like D DIT. I'm still here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Russian. I see places like uh, DIT as, um, you know, a, a center point towards making sure that journalists get proper education, getting them to understand the need for self-censorship, getting them to understand that organizations like NUJ is important, or for those who are in broadcast, SIP2. I know that not every journalist is a member of NUJ or SIP2, and as such, when NUJ issues guidelines or promotes, you know, guidelines of any type, not every journalist accepts or even looks at it. Another issue is just 
when it comes to, you know, like here today, if I am to be talking to a group of journalists, I'll probably be preaching to them. That's the way most of them will see it. And who am I to preach to them? And who are you to tell them what they have to do? So, universities that train journalists need to make them understand that there is need for them to listen to other views. There is need for them to understand that they belong to the same society that they are writing for. Having said all these things, it's also extremely important that we understand that social media plays a huge role in this contest. And because of social media, it is, you know, the actions that any organization or any university could take in helping either student journalists or journalists seem to be limited simply because of what happens on social media. You probably saw during the American election the photos uh, people circulating how uh, Pope Francis okay, endorsed President Trump, something that never happened. But a lot of Americans believe that it was true. And probably many people voted as a result of that. So when you have social media causing a lot of harm than good, it is difficult for us to really have, you know, media, proper media coverage of diversity issues. I'm going to end by saying that um, there is no absolute truth in what we are reading, what we see on television. But media users, newspaper readers, need to understand that there is a cut-off line. They need to draw a line. A lot of people okay, are able to understand when facts have been distorted. Left alone, I would say that it is extremely important that there is media education okay, given to children in primary school and secondary school to enable them separate facts from fiction. Thank you very much. Thank you.